What city could make you just sing out loud? I love LA. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Los Angeles, one of the most amazing places to visit in the United States. Not only is it beautiful, but it has a climate and a lifestyle that's pretty hard to beat. I mean, you can be on the beach in the morning and skiing in the mountains in the afternoon. It's true. Well, it's also true that it's really spread out. It's a whole community of neighborhoods. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite places to visit here in Los Angeles. You're gonna love it. City of a million cars, city of dreams, city of angels. Los Angeles must have a dozen nicknames because it's one of those cities that's so eclectic, it's just too hard to condense into a handful of words. But I can think of three words that managed to capture the spirit of the open mind and open arms of the city. Welcome to L.A. Welcome to L.A. Welcome to L.A. It's this welcoming attitude, the incredible weather, and the promise of fame and fortune that's drawn people from all over the world to experience the magic and allure that Los Angeles has to offer. People from 140 countries speaking 96 languages call LA home, resulting in a cultural diversity that truly offers something for everyone. So what's in it for visitors? Let's hit the road and check out all the great things that LA has to offer. In Los Angeles, you can rent just about anything. Evening gowns to go to the Oscars, a mega mansion to have a party. So I thought, when in Hollywood. Ooh, nice. You should see this car. Look what it's got in it. It's got a little sidebar. Not, not that we're gonna be drinking and driving, but just, you know, when you get a Rolls, you get all these little special things. Oh, this is so cool. No, it's empty. <laughs> the Skyland. Los Angeles was made for convertibles. With an average of almost 300 days of sunshine a year, it's no wonder that this is the movie capital of the world. I'm gonna drive you by the famous corner of Hollywood and Vine. While it may have lost its luster from Hollywood's golden age, Hollywood and Vine is currently undergoing a major renaissance, but there still are some reminders of its seedier recent past. Okay, this is the famous corner of Hollywood and Vine. We have a tattoo parlor over here, X-rated movies right over here. The Pantages Theater is right over here. Now, people do come for that. I'll drive you by the theater right over here, and then we'll go around to the Capitol Records building. Originally opened in 1939, the Pantages Theater is an Art Deco palace that was once owned by Howard Hughes and was once the home to the Academy Awards. It's recently undergone a $10 million museum quality restoration and is currently the place to see all the national tours of Broadway shows in L.A. The Capitol Records building. Ta-da! Great photo op. It's been destroyed more times than any other building in Hollywood in motion pictures. And I hear say it was the first building to be air conditioned on the West Coast. Built to look like a stack of records, these offices and recording studios were once the home of the Beatles, the Beach Boys, Frank Sinatra, and Tina Turner, among others. Definitely worth a drive by. And then, back in the car to head up Hollywood Boulevard. Coming up to the most famous site in Hollywood, Grauman's Chinese Theater, right here. I'll go slow if nobody's right behind me. This is where, look at all the tourists. Where you put your hands and your feet in the footprints. They still show movies in there. It's connected to the Hollywood Highland Complex, which is right over here, which is all kinds of brand new shops. 
The Kodak Theater where the Oscars are held is right here. This is where they put the red carpet, right along this road here. Look up those steps there. From the top balcony up there, you can see the Hollywood sign. Can you see it right through the little hole there? We're holding up traffic, but I want you to see it. There it is. Hooray for Hollywood. You know, you see famous people here all the time, but it is not cool to go up and say anything. Anybody famous in there? Let's talk to him. Got anybody famous in there? Nobody in here at all. <laughs> Darn. Well, you don't know unless you ask, right? Oh, look, it's Superman and Spider-Man. Hi, Spidey. I think I just saw Wonder Woman. <laughs> Time to park the car and go in. OK, now this is really fun. Grauman's Chinese Theater. We're going to go over and put our hands in the handprints and our feet in the footprints and meet some of the characters. You're going to love it. Hi, you guys. Welcome to Hollywood. Judy Garland. She was tiny. Look at my foot compared to hers. You can also have your picture taken with one of the characters wandering around as well. These guys are all out-of-work actors working for tips and donations. It's fun, and your kids will love it too. Welcome to Hollywood. It's the cat in the hat. We're out here on the Walk of Fame. Ah, the Walk of Fame on Hollywood Boulevard. So much to see. You may even get lucky and see a celebrity get their star. Once you've had your fill of the Walk of Fame, check out the souvenir shops and vendors. They've got all kinds of crazy stuff. Look, Elvis sunglasses. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I love these. Ooh, Catwoman. Is it me? No. One more try, one more try. I just love these. Here, you try. Can you see? A lot of these shops offer coupons for the major tourist attractions in LA. Here's a tip. You should definitely rent a car in LA. Taxis don't cruise and public buses take forever. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Los Angeles, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Woohoo! Back to the rolls and head for the hills. Beverly Hills, that is. Trivia! How do you know you're in Beverly Hills? The street signs are black on white instead of white on black with a little BH crown on the top. Now you know. Another way you'll know you're in Beverly Hills is the size of the houses. You won't believe some of them. Holy cow! Wow. And of course, there's Bel Air. Oh, someday, someday. <laughs> okay, here's a little movie trivia. Behind me is the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Here's where they shot the movie Pretty Woman. Huh? It's right at the end of Rodeo Drive. Here's a tip. Ballet park here, have lunch in the lobby lounge, it's great. Go shopping, and then you can go back and forth into the air conditioning, use the bathrooms all day. You don't have to have a Rolls Royce to drive in Beverly Hills. You'll see all kinds of cars here. Mercedes, Range Rovers, Jaguars, Ferraris. Who needs to shop? You could just stand on the corner and watch the money drive by. Wow, there's just something about Rodeo Drive. I don't know what it is. Is it, is it the cars that cost more than my house? Who knows? But I do know one thing. You can go shopping here and get some bargains. Yes, you can. There are normal stores here. And believe it or not, they even have sales. There's nothing quite like shopping on Rodeo Drive. Even if you're just window shopping, you'll have a blast. But I'm in the mood for a little indulgence. Hey, you want to see a magic trick? Pretty good, huh? You want to see him disappear? Come shopping with me. All the famous name designers are here. Just being here makes you feel rich, even if you don't buy anything. 
could get used to this. For another look at the way rich and famous people live, let's cruise on over to one of my favorite neighborhoods, Hancock Park. Another area that celebrities live in is called Hancock Park. Big old turn of the century mansions that they use in lots of movies. You've seen this house in a couple of films. In fact, film companies use Hancock Park and say it's Beverly Hills. It's gorgeous. I could live here. They do a lot of filming here in Hancock Park. We're doing some construction on that one. They say it's Beverly Hills because it has really wide boulevards, but it's, they're really shooting in Hancock Park. Because in Beverly Hills, you can't see a lot of the houses. They're behind a lot of walls. If you look straight ahead, you can see beautiful palm trees. The palm trees line the boulevards. Gorgeous. That's a nice one. I could live there. Most of the houses here cost between three and seven million. You don't get a lot of land for your money, but you definitely get a lot of house. This neighborhood is not for bargain hunters, but you never know. Hey, Universal's not the only tour in town. NBC, CBS, Warner Brothers, they all have private tours that you can call and make an appointment. Now there's no roller coasters, but there's no crowds of tourists either. And who knows, these are where they make the programs. You might see somebody famous. Oh, and you could get discovered. yoo -hoo! I'm over here! So, if movies started in the 20s, what was here first? You might never guess by looking at Los Angeles today, but in fact, the story behind this town's past has a lot to do with its current hip and happening culture. Well, contrary to popular opinion, Los Angeles was not born when the film industry moved into Hollywood. It does have a history. Los Angeles was discovered in 1769 by a group of Spanish explorers who were developing a trail between San Diego and San Francisco, known as El Camino Real. It would be over 50 years before the first Yankee settler arrived, so it's no wonder the Spanish influence is so great in L.A. For the true Hispanic flavor here in Los Angeles, Olivera Street is the place to come. You've got Mexican restaurants, you've got great shopping, souvenirs, vendors. It's a lot of fun. The oldest part of downtown LA, Olivera Street, is known as the birthplace of the City of Angels. There are 27 historic buildings with free tours and a traditional Mexican-style plaza area where you can shop for souvenirs and handcrafted Mexican crafts. The Mexican food here is pretty darn good, too. Hey, you just can't help feeling a little festive. They take your picture for 10 bucks. Now that's a bargain. There's always something happening downtown. And speaking of downtown, LA has the mistaken reputation of having no culture. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Los Angeles has more museums than almost any other city in the world, including the world-famous La Brea Tar Pits, where mastodons and saber-toothed tigers became trapped in sticky tar thousands of years ago, only to have their perfectly fossilized bones unearthed and admired today. Directly adjacent to the tar pits is the internationally renowned Los Angeles County Museum of Art, where a permanent collection of masterworks is sure to grab your attention. Yep, there's no shortage of culture and arts in Los Angeles. And as the show business capital of the world, there's plenty of performing arts as well. Who said LA had no culture? I mean, you've got the Music Center, you've got the Disney Concert Hall, downtown is where it's at. Check out that architecture. Oh, I'm blind. Oh. Downtown holds the majority of performing arts venues, like the theaters at the Music Center and, of course, the famous Staples Center. If it happens in sports or music, it happens here. Go Lakers! But there are over 200 other theaters, performance spaces, and tourist attractions scattered around the county of L.A., and they're all worth the price of admission. I mentioned earlier how big L.A. is, but if you plan ahead and break it down into bite-sized neighborhoods, it's really not that hard to see everything you want to see in one trip. 
Here's a tip. Avoid the freeways at rush hour and plan your day around the traffic flow to make the best use of your time. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Los Angeles, go to lauramckenzietv.com. For a truly unique, one-of-a-kind, only in L.A. shopping experience, head to Melrose. You have to see it to believe it. How would I describe Melrose? Well, I think it's funky and punky and spunky. Think torn t-shirts and rock star clothes, black leather and chains. It's for the under 30 crowd. It's a trip, man. Melrose is lined with one-of-a-kind shops and is full of one-of-a-kind shoppers. If it's hip and happening, they have it here. Some of these stores, I'm not even sure what they sell. But keep an open mind. It's more fun that way. You never know what you're going to see. Hey, I wonder if they have those in my size. I don't even want to know what that's for. Now that's what I call a sidewalk sale. Melrose is a great place to come for lunch, too. You can sit outside and people watch. Even the waiters are interesting. And it's true, they're almost all actors. And if you really want to see some interesting people, head to the beach, but not just any beach, Venice Beach. Venice Beach has it all. Sunbathing, don't forget the sunscreen. Snoozing, ah, I could use a nap myself. Swimming, well, that looks more like jumping to me. Surfing. Okay, they're actually boogie boards, but to these kids, these waves are huge. Sandcastle building? Donald Trump better watch his back. These guys are dynamos. Snacking. Yum, lots of junk food and goodies, as well as great cafes for a leisurely lunch. Street performers. They come in all shapes, sizes, and ages. And of course, my favorite S word, shopping. Artists and vendors line the walkway at Venice Beach plying their wares, wheeling and dealing, telling fortunes, and making fortunes from the thousands of tourists, locals, and beach bums that flock to Venice Beach every weekend. You'll find everything here from good-for-nothing curiosities to stuff you can't live without, and you'll definitely get a bargain. It's a great place to come during the dog days of summer because the breeze off the ocean is almost as cool as the people you'll see skating, strutting, and strolling. There's a lot of street performers, even if some of them are a little scary looking, but they're harmless really and fun for the entire family. For the more active types, Venice Beach provides basketball and tennis courts and agility equipment here as well as the world-famous Muscle Beach. Now that's what I call sightseeing. Here's a tip. Most restaurants and shopping malls have valet parking in LA and attendants expect at least a dollar or two tip. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Los Angeles, go to lauramckenzietv.com. Let's see, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Hancock Park, Venice Beach, downtown. We haven't even scratched the surface of what Los Angeles has to offer. This is no Mickey Mouse city, I assure you. Though LA does offer a wide variety of theme parks, both for the young and the young at heart. And don't forget the exciting glamor of Hollywood and the first class shopping of Rodeo Drive. Head west for beach communities that offer a beautiful ocean and so much more. All across Los Angeles, if you look hard enough, you'll find a hidden history and culture that's as colorful and flamboyant as its people. A rich tapestry of 15 million souls spread out across sparkling shores and majestic mountains. Los Angeles, so much to see, so many places to go. This is definitely a great place for visitors of all ages. The lifestyle in Los Angeles is so great. I just love it here. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Los Angeles, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.